I just bought two. I just bought two new Macs and I have a problem. I'm tempted to treat these things like pets. Maybe name them something cute instead of Macintosh HD. Or do something crazy like migrate my data from my old MacBook Pro or a time machine backup. But no, these computers are cattle, not pets. Some people think they should fall in love with their computers. Some people have precious backups. Some people have their computer die on them and it takes them a week before they're productive again. But not you. You don't treat your computer like a pet. Use it to do things. It's a tool. Make it replaceable. Upgrades don't phase you anymore. You don't have to wait like a schmuck while Time Machine sits around restoring your data. You grab life by the horns. You don't have time to wait for boring restore processes. You automate. Well, anyways, that's the story I tell myself as I spend hours completely automating my Mac setup process. I use Ansible for Pete's sake. If there's something worth doing once, it's worth automating and doing a thousand times, even if I only need to do it once. And that's why I maintain this, the Mac Dev Playbook. It automates my Mac setup, keeps my Mac's configuration synchronized, and makes sure that even if my Mac and my entire backup system went belly up today, I'd be able to get back into a productive state pretty quickly, assuming there's an Apple store nearby. And how is that possible? Well, this Ansible-based playbook will take a brand new Mac, install all the software and command line tools I need, configure many of them automatically, and all I really need to do is log into iCloud, Dropbox, and any other cloud services I use. I just finished updating my Ansible Mac automation to work on M1 Macs, so I thought I'd show how I set up my Air and Mini in this quick video. And you might also be asking, if you can automatically set up your Mac with Ansible, does the Mac even have to be in front of you? No. In fact, I recently made sure the whole playbook works great with any Mac anywhere, even if it's in a rack in a data center somewhere, like at Mac Stadium, or the Macs you can rent in Amazon Web Services. Before I get to it though, I should take a short pause and emphasize that I do still have backups. In fact, I follow the 3 2, 1 backup plan because losing my data would be devastating. No, really, I couldn't bear to lose my grade school report all about computers. The 3 2, 1 backup plan means I have three copies of all my data on at least two different types of storage media with at least one copy off-site. My primary data copy is always on my main Mac with a local time machine backup to my NAS. That NAS is completely backed up to Amazon Glacier every night. In fact, it goes a little deeper because in addition to my two local copies and one cloud backup, I also put all my critical data and projects inside Dropbox, which means it's backed up in four places. Anyways, that means even if I had a huge disaster like Red Shirt Jeff burning down my house or aliens taking over St. Louis, I can rest easy knowing that my data's intact. Well, I probably wouldn't rest easy since I just have the charred remains of a bed, but you get what I mean. Back to the MacDev playbook though. Setup is really fast. You basically install Ansible, set your options, and run the playbook. After fixing a few bugs in the playbook while I set up my MacBook Air, I unplugged my old MacBook Pro, slid the mini into my rack, and set it up from scratch. First I ran through the manual steps creating a user account and signing into iCloud. Then once I was in macOS, I opened the App Store and signed in since I'll need to be signed in for my Mac apps to install automatically. I made sure I could use the Python 3 version shipped with macOS, then I installed Ansible with pip and made sure to install the Xcode developer tools when I was asked. I downloaded the MacDev playbook from GitHub, copied over my customized config file from my iPhone with AirDrop, and installed the open source Ansible content with this Ansible Galaxy command. Finally, it's time to unleash the automation. I ran the playbook using the dash k command line option, which asks for my account password so the playbook can manage apps on my computer. It installs all the apps I bought from the App Store, then it installs other apps with homebrew casks like Chrome, Docker, Discord, and Slack, and it installs everything I ever use on the command line too. The first time I ran the playbook, I actually ran into a few errors installing apps like this one because I was still getting used to the M1 architecture, but it was short work fixing everything, and thanks especially to GitHub user Shuji3 for a PR that fixed homebrew installation on M1. I also noticed that most apps take a few seconds or maybe a minute or two to install, but for some reason Xcode took like an hour and it was maxing out the CPU the whole time. I'm not sure what it was doing, but I noticed the Xcode app was a whopping 30 gigabytes after that. Anyways, the playbook also configures a bunch of things, like most of the system settings I prefer, like having a dark gray desktop background and the size of my dock, and making my key repeat rate as fast as possible. 
It even configures the order of apps in my dock since I like having the dock identical between my two Macs. And you know what's best about all this? I built this thing to be item potent. That means I can run the playbook again and it won't make any changes or break anything. It just makes sure my Mac is set up exactly how I like it. In fact, I run the playbook at least once a week on both my Macs so they can stay perfectly in sync. Sadly, not everything in this world is perfectly automatable. Applications like Photoshop and Illustrator can't be installed automatically, at least not in any way I've found. Plus, you still have to sign into everything and enter license keys for any paid apps that aren't installed through the App Store. So after all that fun watching my Mac automatically build itself from scratch, I had to sit there like a caveman and click buttons to get my precious paid apps installed. And some apps like Terminal and Sublime Text are easy to configure automatically or by saving a plist file, but many apps don't expose their configuration to macOS's default system, so I have to scroll around and click on things like they did in the Stone Ages. How old fashioned. But the nice thing about all this is I unboxed my Mac Mini, plugged it in, and within an hour it was up and running with an identical configuration in all my apps and data, and I didn't even have to use Time Machine or sit around for hours watching Migration Assistant grab all the data from my old MacBook Pro. And there are two other benefits. First, if you have more than one Mac, it's easy to keep the configuration in sync. No, not that in sync. Wrong graphic. And second, doing a 100% clean reinstall of your system every year or two instead of constantly upgrading and migrating everything keeps your Mac running lean and mean. 10-year-old forgotten kernel extensions or a background app you installed for a smart mouse pad in 2000 won't cause you trouble next time you update macOS. You can get the free and open source MacDev playbook on GitHub, and there's a link to it below. And do you use Linux? Well, you could build pretty much the same thing. It's easy to automate with Ansible. It could even do Windows, but you'll have to spend a lot more time with PowerShell scripts if you want to go that route. If you want to learn more about Ansible, I'd strongly encourage you to check out my free Ansible 101 series or buy my book, Ansible for DevOps. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. I think there's an XKZ, it's, uh, heart rates, well, let's, let's check the heart rate here. 113, woohoo, see what I do for these videos. Kid running upstairs. I put a joke in here, but the joke is not there. It was probably bad enough that the computer automatically deleted the joke for me. But many apps don't expose their configuration to macOS's defaults. What was that?